Welcome back out to the cabin build. In this video, I'm going to explain why I'm taking my cabin apart. I'm getting a lot of questions about that, and I realize I probably haven't fully explained it as well as I could have. And so I'm going to do that at, at the end of this video. But uh, just to give you a little insight of what's coming, it's all because of this book. This book incredibly inspired me. Um, I've had this dream to build a log cabin for a long time. Uh, I remember telling a friend about it back in 2016, maybe beginning 2017, and I just didn't own the land yet, so I just didn't have a place to start building the cabin, but he did, and he started building a cabin, and I started watching him build this cabin, and uh, I realized, am I just going to wait until I can afford to buy the land, or am I going to get started? And this book gave me the answer to getting started. So uh, I'm really grateful. This is a, a book called uh, The Craft of Modular Post and Beam by James Mitchell. And I'm going to read you a little bit of his insight, his philosophy on building cabins, or in his case, building homes. He built a 4,000 square foot home, completely debt free, I think just in some summers, um, before he owned the land. And so that really inspired me because I don't own this land and we don't own the land where we eventually want to put it. You know, we're still saving. We don't... Uh, we're not financially ready to find to, to buy that piece of land and we're also still looking for that perfect piece and so this design philosophy that uh, he explains in this book which I'm implementing here is the answer to get started get building while you're still looking for land while you're saving for land and uh, hopefully if everything goes right you can move that cabin that you've cut and dry fit and, and made to that location now uh, in his book, he just cuts all the pieces and then he assembles it once. I, I am taking a step further. I am assembling it all. But that's because I want to a test fit everything, make sure everything fits properly. And we might be able to keep it here for a couple years and enjoy it in the meantime. So it's not going to be a huge deal to take it apart. I know it seems like a lot of work, but as I'm building it, I'm constantly putting pieces in, taking them out. And because it's all put together with these big construction screws... It's just kind of pulling out the screw and taking the piece out. It's just a big puzzle. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end. Before I get into that, though, uh, I want to lay my floorboards out and then create just a little temporary slanted roof here to shed snow and rain uh, while I work on these lower walls and protect this lower level. So I'm going to do those floorboards, and then we'll get back to this discussion at the end. Thanks for watching. Probably a little difficult to see from this camera angle but in order to get my floorboards all going square I need to do a bit of scribing on this first floorboard because this top plate uh, angles slightly out because I want all the water that drips off the front of it to drip off the cabin so I've got it kind of pushed out at an angle but then I needed it centered with this post so to compensate for that this first floorboard is going to get scribed so it's going to be a little thinner in the front than it is in the back in order to make this edge of the floorboard perpendicular with my floor joists, allow me to make the rest of the floorboards all nice and square. Like most things that I do, it's just wood chip by wood chip. A little bit of sawdust at a time and slowly make it all fit.
Okay, that gives us a rough, rough cut. beveling it this way so that it kind of cups around this log it's angled that way you don't need to scribe anymore just a carpenter's pencil I like these square pencils because while well, they mark better especially on wet wood but they also can be used as a scribe just by the width of the pencil run that against the, the reference point Here, this section here, I need to make straight. Because it goes against this straight surface. All right, this is my favorite part of cabin building, problem solving. I have a situation where as I lay out these floorboards, this tripod is getting in the way. I can't take it down because I need to deal with this ridge pull yet, and I'm gonna need a tripod to lift that ridge pull up. My second problem is that even with the ridge, this tripod the size that it is, I struggled to get enough height to get this post up, which means I'm not gonna get enough height to get the ridge pull up. So not only is it in the way, but I also have to find a way to make it taller. So this is my favorite part of cabin building, is this problem solving process. So while I take action, I'm going to let you see if you can uh, come up with a solution to A, make a taller tripod while getting it out of the way of these floorboards. And just for the record, closing the legs in anymore doesn't work. I had it as close as I possibly could to get this post up before it was just way too unsafe. So, um, and even then, that would require the, the tripod to be in these floorboards. got uh, 
some boards drilled across the top here on the top side of these four planks that stop from sliding down. Now hopefully I can just lift it up, put this base of the tripod leg up on the platform. Ooh. There we go. So you can see here the boards I had to brace it on those floor planks. Now I'll be able to bring this tripod in closer and have enough height to do the ridge pull. I might also cut down one of these other legs. Maybe that one or this one, probably that one. So I can have two legs up, one leg that way, one leg that way, and lift the ridge pull up. Since these are just rough sawn boards, they've got some warp and some twist and some bend and so each board I'm planing down a little bit, marking so that I get as minimal of seam as possible between each board. I just mark the high sides and uh, plane it down. Getting closer, let's go take a look at the other end. Okay, before I forget, I just want to mention the screws that I'm using here. Um, I'm doing uh, U2 fasteners, of course, they've been supporting this project and their screws are incredible. And once you start using good quality screws, you'll never go back to those standard deck screws from the box store. And I'm using a number 12 for the boards when I'm in the internal part of the board. So if there's any bow or anything, this heavier duty screw will suck it down. And then when you get close to the end of the board, if you're afraid that it might crack, or due to regulations, I think it's something like within an inch of the board, you want you don't want to be going this thick, you want to go something a little thinner. So I'm using the number 10s at the ends of the boards and the number 12s in the middle of the board. Both of them are working great. So I highly recommend uh, U2 fasteners, uh, number 12s, number 10s. These are four inch screws for putting down the deck boards. Now, the reason I bring that up is because I am taking this cabin apart, and so I need to make sure I'm using screws that are not going to strip. These screws are not slipping at all, they're not stripping, I'm, I know I'm going to be able to take them out. And even when they're completely bent, I've, I've had some s tests where I've put a screw halfway in and then kicked it and bent the screw in half and I'm still able to take the screw out. So uh, that's why I'm using a higher quality screw rather than just a standard box or construction screw. And that's the case with every screw I'm using. And none of these screws in this cabin are low quality. Everything's gonna be something that I know I'm gonna be able to unscrew later. So with that being said, let's get on with the rest of it. Now, every day on Instagram, someone tells me that building a cabin is a dream of theirs and I can completely relate. But I think most people have the same problem. One, they don't own land. Two, they just don't have the time to just commit to building a cabin. And so hopefully what I'm sharing with you might inspire some of you to be able to start taking action and work within your means, whether it's starting to buy pieces of wood and working in your backyard, 
or if you have a place where you can start harvesting logs, start harvesting, letting them dry, start doing some cutting, and start building your pieces for the dream of one day putting them into the cabin of your dreams. So I'm going to read you a little bit of Post and Beam here. This is uh, the book that inspired this. It's by James Mitchell. And uh, I've just got a little section here tabbed, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to read a few little sections for you. So this is the introduction, the preface. It is a book about how you can build a house of your dreams without debt and without even owning the land first. I was born and raised where big trees, rocky mountains, and the sea were my playground. Building has always been a passion for me. Me too. When I was a kid, I loved to build forts. On the ground, underground, in the trees, on the water, out of sand, snow, straw, wood, or whatever. Exactly. That's exactly where I come from. And so, as you can see, why when I'm reading this, I'm thinking, okay, we're on the same page. I'm just going to skip ahead to another section here. This is really important. Debt, primarily for one's home, often forces people to lead lives of constant financial stress and worry and prevents them from considering environmental factors in their home buying decisions. When even the cheapest mass-produced house is beyond the reach of most, concerns about quality and the environment are often forgotten. When it was time to settle down and have a family, the pieces came together like a big jigsaw puzzle. I would construct it in modular pieces, prefabricating and storing the components of the building shell until time was ripe to assemble it on the site foundation. The trick was to reduce the number of pieces and simply the process so that the builder could accomplish the individual tasks in his or her spare time with minimal assistance and money. I considered and quickly discarded several building types. Conventional stud frame was, had too many pieces that can twist and distort over time. A notched corner log house, also known as block work, wouldn't work for me because the size of the logs meant the construction would be difficult and storing the pieces would be impossible. Braced timber framework would require long members that would be susceptible to twisting during storage. Also, the sandwiched exterior panels, called stress skins, used to brace timber framework are expensive and wasteful. Especially after the windows and door openings are cut out, assembly would require a crane and ultimately the finished building would, like any, would look like any other standard framed house. <sighs> Get all the snow off of my book here before I close the page. <sighs> I got this uh, roof in and tarp just in time because this weather got pretty nasty. In a perfect world, all housing would be recyclable. It would be possible to take it apart and move it if necessary. Anyways, um, the craft of post and beam, the craft of modular post and beam by James Mitchell. This book, I think, is out of print, so I think you're going to be paying a pretty penny to try to find a copy of it. Um, luckily, my neighbor let me borrow this one, and I've been sitting on this copy for a few years, so I think I owe him a, a bookstore gift card or something like that, because I don't know if I'm ever going to give it back. It has really been my Bible. Um, I'm not following everything in this book to a T. Of course, um, for me, if I'm going to put the time into anything, and especially make a video about it, I do feel like I should be bringing something of my own to the project, but the principles are all based off this book, and I think eventually um, I will probably continue doing this and continue following this method if this all seems to work out, which it seems to be. But the idea simply being, just to repeat myself, is making a house or making a cabin in small enough pieces that they're easy to store, transport, and reassemble with one person. You know, obviously a little bit of help makes that go a little quicker, but actually sometimes I feel like help just slows things down. But we'll see. When I come to taking this thing apart, I'm sure I'm going to get some help. I also have a few more uh, quotes I'm going to grab here. So these are just a few of the other quotes that I pulled from reading that book. Post and beam, nothing hidden. The strength and simplicity of form implies a sense of security and coziness, seldom equaled in any other building type. Designing with logs and timbers is an interrelationship between nature and man. 
the exterior finish of a wooden house should seek to reflect nature. In the forest, the tree's roots grow from soil and rock. In the same way, a rock foundation gives the feeling of a log or timber house in an integral part of nature. I took that one pretty seriously because these posts between my windows, I really want them to reflect all the trees that you see out the window. I also made sure that every single post is orientated in the same direction that it grew. So if the, if the tree grew you know, in one direction, the posts are always oriented in that same direction. Um, and same thing with the foundation, even though it's just a temporary foundation, that's why I put it on the stumps. I wanted it to feel like it's part of this forest. Even in this temporary environment, I wanted it to um, feel as beautiful as the forest that it replaced. And here's another one. Houses built today using composited materials, glues and staples have an average lifespan of 25 years. A log or timbered house has a lifespan of a thousand or more, which you know, to me, that's also super important. You know, if I'm going to spend the time to build a house, I don't want it to just last and eventually be old and crumbled and out of style by the time I die. I want something that is going to actually get better with age, you know, like an old guitar or something that has uh, every little dent and blemish and scratch all kind of adds to the character. And I think that's what's beautiful about this cabin is that it's only going to look better with age as long as it's properly maintained. You know, the biggest things obviously are worried about rot and mold, and as long as it's been managed uh, and taken care of like anything else that gets better with age, you know, it's gonna only look cooler and have more stories to tell as the years go on. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, so in recap, you know, why am I taking this cabin apart? Well, I don't own the land. Uh, and the land that we do want to put this on is um, much more north. So we want to be around um, lakes. We want to have this on water. We, ideally, what we want is a place where we can go hang out at the cabin for a bit and then push off in a canoe and go and explore for the day or maybe do an overnight camp somewhere and then come back and have this be our home base. Um, once we set it up at that home base, you know, we're going to build an outdoor sauna outdoor shower, we're going to add on to this section and just make it a real enjoyable place to be one with nature and just spend time with the family disconnected from the world and the chaos and the news and everything that's going on. This is going to be a place where the family can just be a family, enjoy each other's company and feel free and feel creative. And so that's the dream I'm trying to build for my family. And that is why I've got started and that is why I've decided on building a cabin with this post and beam method in the way that I have. So hopefully that inspires some of you. I hope you enjoyed this explanation. Uh, from this point on, anytime I see a comment, what is he, he's taking it apart? Why is he taking it apart? I can now send a link to this video and people can get a little bit more information about why I'm taking this cabin apart. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Be nice to people, be nice to our earth, and we'll see you in the next video.